Welcome to Yin Yoga, Freedom of Space. For those of you that are moving through this training in the three-day format, this is the end of day one. And after all the lectures and all the knowledge that's been, been taken in, I want to invite you to just switch the brain off and get away from thinking and just come back to just being in your body and moving beyond time, moving beyond place and space just having a, a real deep experience. So we'll get started here on our backs. Almost like a little yin yoga siesta. Extend the left leg straight out in front of you and then bring your right foot all the way up to your inner left leg, left thigh. You can always take a block if you want or a bolster and place that underneath your outer right knee, right thigh. And then we're gonna cactus the arms. So the elbows bend about 90 degrees, palms face the sky. So you get that expansiveness across your chest and your lungs. Feel free if it feels right for you now to close your eyes as you begin to slip into this, this dimension, this world of yin yoga. Take a nice, big, deep inhale through your nose. And then out the mouth, exhale, just let it all go. Any stress, any tension, any tightness, let it go. Two more just like that. Another big inhale through the nose. And out the mouth, exhale, let it go. Good, one more time. Take a big inhale. And exhale, let it go. See if you can even allow your breath to just move in its own natural, gentle, effortless rhythm. So it's as if you're downshifting, shifting gears from fifth to fourth to third to second all the way down to first and then even into neutral and then we can take it one step further and move from neutral to where we just completely shut the engine off For these next 75 minutes that we have together, no agenda, no need to get anywhere, nothing to do or to make happen. And that the degree of your success has everything to do with the degree of your surrender. How much can you simply let go? theme of this practice is finding freedom within spaciousness. And you reflect upon the effects that stress has on us. Stress on a physical level makes the body tense and tight and contracted, small. Stress in the mind also makes the mind very, very small. We no longer have the ability to see things from different perspectives when we become stressed out. So the mind becomes small. And also the impact that stress has within our hearts. Our hearts become knotted and contracted up, which never feels good start to feel blocked and stuck in this area. So we use this practice to find spaciousness, the opposite of stress and tension. Finding space, not just within the joints and the connective tissues of the body, but also experiencing the freedom of space within the mind and the heart as well.
From here, we'll bring the right knee all the way back up to neutral. Reach the hands forward, grab the right shin, hug and squeeze the right knee, right thigh deep into the belly. Circle the right thigh around in a clockwise direction. Should feel good within that right hip joint. And then as you're ready, same thing in a counterclockwise direction. Bring that right knee back to neutral. Take the right arm, reach that out to the right. And with the left hand on the outer right knee, we'll take the right knee all the way over to the left. And if you want, you can even grab a block or a bolster. I'm gonna grab my block here and just put that underneath the right knee, right thigh for support. welcome to stay right here or if you'd like to proceed a little further we have the option to come into what we call cat pulling its tail pose so for that variation just bend your left foot in reach down with your right hand grab your left foot grab your tail keep that right shoulder blade drawing down Feel free to find the position for your head and neck that feels most comfortable for you. For me, I'm going to shift over towards the left, the same direction that right knee is going in. Phase one of the yin pose is to find your edge, to find the place. Not too much, not too little, not too intense but just right, almost like a musician that's found that perfect pitch, that perfect note. Second phase of the yin pose is to find stillness. That in many ways, stillness and yin are interconnected, interchangeable. The third phase is just allow time to do its thing as we hold these positions and these poses anywhere from three to five minutes. And remembering that the magic happens around that 60 to 90 second mark where our, our connective tissues and our deep fascia begin to benefit from that long, deep, slow, sustained stretch. So in many ways, in a practice like this yin or the restorative that you'll do with Lauren, patience is a virtue. Patience is also the perfect antidote for stress. Very often we get stressed out because of a lack of patience. We get caught up within that mentality of needing to hurry and rush. We slow down and find stillness. We get off that hamster wheel that so many people are trapped on. And you can just kick back and just allow the medicine of yin yoga to work its wonderful, wonderful magic. Medicine for the body medicine for your nervous system, and medicine for the mind. Thank you.
Grabbing that left foot, your tail, release that left leg back towards straight. Bring the right knee all the way back up to neutral. And then draw your left knee in to join the right. Keeping your left knee hugging in as you're ready. Extend the right leg straight out in front of you, reclining tree pose on the other side. Soil the left foot high up to the inner right leg, right thigh. Feel free to cactus those arms. Palms up to the sky. Remember, you can always place a prop to go underneath your outer left thigh or left knee. The last few breaths there. Good, and then from here, go ahead and bring the left knee all the way back up to center. Reach the hands forward, grab that left shin. Hug that left knee, left thigh in. Circle that left thigh around a few times. And as you're ready, the opposite direction. Take the left arm and reach that over to the left. Right hand on that outer left knee. Taking that left knee all the way over to the right to that twist. And then if you like coming into cat, pulling its tail, reaching down and grabbing your right foot with your left hand. Nice right thigh stretch. Nice lower back stretch, nice inner left chest, left shoulder stretch as well. Henry David Thoreau said that the soul grows through subtraction, not addition. There's an old Taoist saying that says, person of the world adds something on every day, but a person of the Tao removes something every day. You know, we live in a society and a culture where we're taught to constantly accumulate, to acquire more and more stuff as if that's gonna make us happy. But we all reach a certain place of insight and wisdom where we realize that true happiness and joy doesn't come from stuff and certainly doesn't come from clutter. And 
And that by letting that clutter go, letting the stuff go that's unnecessary, we create space. And when we create space, then we create room for that joy to be able to flow through and to blossom. Especially important within our schedule, if everything's planned out to the minute, to the second, there's no room for spontaneity to arise. See if you can allow yourself to drop deeper and deeper and deeper into the elegant simplicity of presence. Give that tail one last final squeeze and then release the tail. So right leg back towards straight, left knee all the way back up to neutral. Bend and hug both knees, both thighs back into the belly. Begin to gently rock forward and backward a few times. Gather enough momentum to rock yourself all the way up to seated. Cross the feet, tabletop pose, all fours position. As you get set in tabletop pose on the inhale, drop your belly, pull the heart forward. Then on the exhale, round the back, curl the chin in. A few more like that, inhale, taking your time, no hurries, no rush. And exhale, slowly, slowly curling. Just flow through uh, about three or four more of those just on your own. And if it feels right, you can even do it with the eyes closed. As if you're just taking a little yin yoga retreat. Minimizing any unnecessary external and outward distraction. In yoga, we call this pratyahara, turning away from the outer world and beginning to open up to illuminate the internal world. Come back to a neutral spine, neutral tabletop pose. From here, we'll take the right leg and we'll bring it over top that left leg, setting up for shoelace pose. You're gonna open the feet out nice and wide. And then you're gonna sit back either onto a yoga block or you can come all the way down onto your yoga mat. Hands resting right there at the inner arches of the feet. Take an inhale, sit up nice and tall. And then on the exhale, just begin to hinge over and down to your own degree. Feel free to use any props that might feel good. I'm gonna get my bolster, I got a block here just to rest my forearms and elbows. Just finding that spot, coming back to the gentleness, the gentle rhythm of the breath. W.S. Merwin writes, little breath, little breath, row me gently, for I am a river that I am learning to cross. Can you allow that gentle breath to support you, to carry you?
Some of you may be in this particular posture and it might feel intense. Sometimes yin yoga can have an intense quality to it. You're moving your body into positions that your body has lost connection to. Shoelace pose, we bring the hips into an internal rotation. It reminds me a little bit of this, this fruit in India called amalaki. And when you initially put amalaki into your mouth, it's very, very, very intense. You kind of have a knee, knee jerk reaction where you want to spit it out. But if you stay with it and you keep chewing, see it through, eventually that intensity begins to transform into a wonderful sweetness. So the intensity that you sometimes feel in a posture like shoelace is just uh, a sign that these areas in your body have atrophied. And as you continue to hold the pose, and the pose begins to work its magic, including bringing hydration and restoration into those deep connective tissues, it begins to feel sweeter and sweeter. You're regaining your, your body's natural range of motion. The range of motion that you were gifted with when you were born. This body is amazing. This body is a miracle. So let's again make sure that we take, take care of it. Dr. Wayne Dyer says, the body is like the garage where the soul is parked. Last few breaths there. And then nice and easily begin to exit out of your pose. And then we'll come into the same thing on the other side. So in order to get there, you're gonna rotate the body in a counterclockwise direction. Spin yourself all the way around in a full circle until you're back facing the top of your yoga mat. And then now you'll notice that your left leg is on top of your right leg unless something very freaky just happened. So you get that left leg snug on top of the right, both hands resting right there at the inner arches of the feet, setting up for shoelace pose on the other side. As you're ready, go ahead and enter into the pose.
take a last few breaths there. That's it for that one. Go ahead and ease your way all the way back up. And then we'll uncross, uncross those legs, feet flat on the ground, knees to the sky, hands behind the hips, fingers forward. And then just as a little counter movement, let those knees sway side to side. And as your knees go one direction, you can turn your gaze the opposite direction. Both knees back up to neutral. Now we'll come into the deer pose with the right leg forward. So similar to pigeon or sleeping swan, you're gonna have your right knee bent about 90 degrees. And you're also gonna bend your back left knee, left leg about 90 degrees as well. So it's almost like a figure four shape here. Some people like to take a block or bolster, place that underneath the right hip. Feel free to do that if that feels right. Before we fold out over the pose, we're gonna come into a little twist. So right hand over to the right, left hand on that outer right knee, right thigh. Take an inhale, lift up tall through the chest. And then on the exhale, peel that right chest open. Just gently looking out over that right shoulder. As you weave your way in and out of these different postures and poses, just notice the sensations that you feel. Physical sensations are happening in the present moment. So similar to the breath, when you're watching sensation, your mind is in that yoga zone of true mindfulness. Give that one last little squeeze. Turn the gaze forward, slowly unravel out of the twist, and then we'll fold out over that front right leg. I'm gonna get my bolster here out in front just to amp the potency of comfort up a little bit. You can always grab a block here as well. Put the block underneath the forehead. Just finding that, that height that feels suitable for you. And almost like a heavy velvet blanket draping out over that right leg. Surrender to gravity. In the Taoist philosophy, we sometimes call this Wu Wei, which means to go with the flow instead of against the flow, to yield to the natural laws and forces of nature, of the universe. Take the path of least resistance.
in nice and easily, begin to transition all the way up. From here, we'll lean into the outer right hip and then swing the left leg forward all the way towards the top of your yoga mat. Take your right foot, bring it high up to your inner left leg, left eye, setting up for a half butterfly pose. As you're ready, reach those arms up to the sky. Take an inhale, create that link through your side waist. And then on the exhale, just begin to fold all the way out over that left leg, just letting your hands come to wherever it feels natural and organic for you. And as you find, find your place in the pose, just softening into the position. There's a famous, famous professor of world religions who was acclaimed all across the world. And one of the things that made this professor most happy and most joyful was his relationship to his beloved granddaughter. He loved her endlessly. But tragically, one day she lost her life. She was murdered. And as you can imagine, this was devastating for the professor. For he had to go through one of the greatest losses that any human being can go through. One of the biggest sufferings of life. And for many weeks after the funeral, he would sit out on his porch and people in the community, people lived in his neighborhood would come by and offer their condolences, bring flowers, to just do what they could to help support him through these difficult times. But he said that the most powerful thing, the most powerful act that anybody did was a, a young Native American man who would come by at the same time every afternoon and would sit in a chair on the porch next to the professor. But without saying a single word, and he would just sit there in total, complete silence. And he said that this was the, the biggest healing gift that he could receive from anybody. Just the presence of silence and the maturity and the wisdom of this, this young man to hold space for the professor to feel what he was feeling without labeling it without adding any words, any noise. And over time, that was one of the gifts to help him move through this traumatic experience. You see, this is the power of spaciousness. Continue to allow your body Continue to allow your mind to become more and more open as you dive deeper and deeper into that silence and that serenity.
And now we'll bring the left arm to the inside of the left leg. Just lean into that left elbow. Take the right arm, reach it all the way up to the sky. Open up that right chest as you inhale. Then extend that right arm forward and out. Just be here for several breaths, nothing too long. Sometimes people even like to bend that right elbow and bring that right hand right behind the head and neck if that feels more comfortable for you. little reach goodbye come all the way back up place the right hand onto the ground behind you right fingertips turned away from the body lean back onto that right hand and on the inhale float the hips up take that left arm reach it all the way up and back and on the exhale lower slow all the way back down towards your yoga mat more like that little backward bend inhale arching through the back and exhale all the way back down to the mat okay one more time inhale open up and expand and exhale all the way back down again and then we'll set up for the deer pose on the other side so this time your left leg will come forward right leg right knee bends just finding that figure four shape feel free to take the block put that underneath that left hip for support and then left hand over to the left right hand onto that outer left knee left eye take an inhale create a little bit of length in the torso and the spine and then on the exhale gentle twist over towards the left One last little squeeze. Turn the gaze forward, slowly unravel out of the twist. And then as you're ready, just begin to let your torso drape out over that front left foot.
good, and then we'll slowly come out of that one. Chances are at this point in the practice, you're in a whole other place than when you began. Swing that right leg forward. Bring the left foot high to that inner right leg, right thigh. Take both arms, reach that all the way up above. And then on the exhale, cascade out over that right foot, right leg. Butterfly pose, half butterfly on the other side. And now we'll make that shift of just bringing the right arm to the inside of the right leg. And then take that left arm, reach it all the way up above. Open up that left chest on the inhale. And then extend that left arm forward and out on the exhale. Remembering you always have the option if you want to bend the left elbow, bring the left hand behind the head and the neck. Take several breaths there. One last little reach. Come all the way back up, left hand onto the ground behind you. And then lean back into that left hand on the inhale, float up through the navel, reach back to that right arm. And then on the exhale, lower everything back down. Two more, inhale, feel the pulse. And exhale all the way back down. One more time, inhale. 
And exhale all the way down. Good, now we'll shift into the dragonfly pose. So you'll rotate your body to face towards one side of your mat. You'll open your legs out wide. And uh, you may wanna get your props here if you like. And we'll just begin to fold over between the inner legs and the inner thighs. Feel free to grab a block if you like and put that underneath your forehead for support. Carry a lot of tension, a lot of stress in the neck. So when we put a, a block underneath the forehead, it helps us to release that. Sometimes if you don't fold down that low, you can create like a, a tower here. So you can make it as high as you need to. And even something like that can be very beneficial. So feel free to get creative and, and find something that works for you. Now in yoga, we have what's called a padigraha. It's one of the, the yamas and the eight limbs of yoga. And a padigraha means non-grasping or letting go. So often as adults, we get so good at clinging to things, clinging to people, clinging to possessions, clinging to past events. And sometimes past events that just cause resentment and cause the poison of anger. The wisdom of yoga teaches us the power of letting go of no longer holding on to that which no longer serves. Each exhale through this practice is an opportunity to let go. And when you let go a little bit, a little bit of awakening happens. When you let go a lot, a lot of awakening happens. So it's up to you, how much are you willing how courageous can you be to let go more and more and more? Last few breaths there.
Beautiful, that's it for the dragonfly. Come all the way up. Move your props off to the side. As you're ready, just bring the legs back together. That one could be intense for those inner legs, the inner thighs. And then we'll set up for the saddle pose. So for me, I'm gonna take a block, create a little ramp here. Almost like a little barring of a restorative move. So I got my, my ramp. Got a bolster here. Big toes come together and the knees open out wide. So for some of you, you may stay up just like this and that's completely, completely fine. Others of you, you may start to recline back and you could come back onto your fingertips. So you just test the waters, find what feels right for you. Again, not too much, not too little. And one person's medicine is another person's poison. So remember, you're never comparing so you're just doing it to your own degree. And I actually feel like I don't need the block. I'm just gonna go all the way back onto the bolster. You may come onto your forearms. Some of you may come all the way down onto the floor. It just depends on what it is that feels best for you and your body. And this particular saddle pose is so great, especially for those of you that are athletes. Great for stretching the hip flexors, good for the knee joints, great for the tops of the feet. For you runners out there where your feet and your ankles are constantly in a state of flexion, now you get a little extension, so a great counter stretch. And if you're leaning back to any degree, it's also medicinal for your lower back, for your sacrum. We spoke about one of our power yoga practices about so many people that suffer from lower back pain. So as we say in yin yoga, a happy sacrum equals a happy life. So we want that sacrum to be nice and healthy here. As you create all that spaciousness within the body, again, notice more and more space between the thoughts inside of your mind so that your mind is less like a busy congested freeway during rush hour and your mind is more of like a country highway at 3 a.m. in the morning so rare that a car passes by each car is a symbol of a thought You have longer and longer gaps between those thoughts and the thinking process. See if you can relish within that space. Space where the mind just becomes quiet and free.
Nice, you guys. As you're ready, take your time, no rush. Just begin to transition out of the saddle. Bring the hands out in front of the knees, cross the feet behind you, and then just roll back onto your sits bones. And then bring the soles of the feet together, slide the feet away from the body so your lower body is shaped like a diamond. Reach down, grab the ankles, slide the fingers underneath the bottoms of the ankles. On and inhale, pull your heart forward and out like you're doing a flat back. And then on the exhale, just begin to fold down, forehead drawing towards the feet. Again, you may use your props here to support the weight of your head. Seated diamond is a great stretch, a great healing touch for the outer hips and the IT band. there. And as you're ready, crawl yourself all the way back up. Bring the hands to the outer hips, the outer knees, close the knees together, extend your legs straight out in front of you along your yoga mat. As we now set up for caterpillar pose. Both arms come up on the inhale. And then begin to fold all the way over and down on the exhale. 
again, hands, grab whatever feels right for you and you fold down to your own degree. You could take a block here and put that between the legs. You could even use a couple blocks. Relax your feet, relax your toes, relax your fingers and your grip muscles. Keep releasing, keep relaxing. Author Mandy Hale writes, the caterpillar grows its wings in a season of isolation. Remember that next time that you are alone. So often when we're alone, or we're moving through challenges, moving through the dark night of the soul, phases of despair. We lose perspective, we lose sight as to what's actually happening. So important to take time to, to be alone, to come back to deepening our relationship to ourself. Stay folded over in this caterpillar position. It's like you're taking a retreat inside of yourself. You're just with your, yourself. No other distractions. And then the practice becomes like a mirror. So whatever you have going on inside of you, your practice reflects that back to you. If there's anything that you've been running away from within your life, it finally has an opportunity to catch up with you, which is probably why most people are constantly keeping themselves busy and running and racing around. They don't want to deal with that stuff. But if you're truly interested in transcending your own suffering and unhappiness, as Robert Frost says, the only way out is through. You got to move through it. You got to face it. You got to be with yourself. And the beautiful thing is, is that as you deepen your relationship to yourself, all your other relationships begin to improve as well. So we bring those qualities of compassion, of kindness, of patience, of respect to how we work within our own practice.
last few breaths. Nice and slowly you begin to roll yourself all the way up. From here, we're just gonna release all the way down onto our backs to a final, final resting pose. If you want, you can even take your bolster and slide that underneath your knees here. Take your time to get as comfortable as possible. Get settled. enjoy uh, Samadhi Shavasana, Samadhi, the goal of all yoga, that eighth limb, where we move beyond time into the timeless. We move beyond form into the formless. And we move beyond the finite to the infinite, just pure, vast, eternal spaciousness shavasana and easily 
awareness and slowly just bring your awareness back to that gentle, effortless flow of the breath. And that gentle rhythm of the heart, the great rhythms of your life. Bend the knees, draw both knees into your belly, your torso. If you like, you can roll over onto your right side or even your left side. And then we'll all slowly make our way back up to a last, final, comfortable cross legged seated position, Sukhasana. As you get up to seated, bringing the hands up to prayer position in front of your chest, in front of your heart as a gesture of honoring, honoring practice and giving gratitude to your practice for helping take you from the small self to the big self of spaciousness and to all the resources and richness that exist within that space. As Walt Whitman put it, I am much larger than I thought. I did not know that I held so much goodness. Take a big inhale through the nose and out the mouth, exhale, let it go. Slowly open up the eyes. Much health, much wealth, much love to you. Namaste. Thank you for your practice, and I'll see you soon.